I recently picked up this $4 bug zapper from Walmart, and it claims it outputs 2,750 volts. And that may seem like a lot, but I feel like I can do a lot better. Now before I start tearing this thing down, I gotta at least try the original product. So I stuffed in my two AA batteries, and I see it has a nice fancy little indicator light there. So let's start jamming the screwdriver in. Eh, not that impressive. I'm not even sure if it could kill a bug. Let's see if this thing even works on a bug. Yeah, like that thing's practically still alive. Yeah, I don't think it did anything to that. It definitely needs to be modified so it's much stronger. I tore apart this bug zapper to see what I was dealing with on the inside. And taking a look at that circuit, this is essentially the same thing that you'd find inside of a camera for its uh, flash circuit. The only big difference is that this capacitor gets charged up to about 10 times higher than what you'd find in a camera. And then of course there's no uh, trigger circuit to fire a flash lamp. But essentially it takes 3 volts DC and uh, steps it up to nearly 3000 volts to charge that capacitor. But then the circuit is normally open. In fact, uh, the voltage gets applied to that inner plate there, and then the two outer plates are kept at about zero volts and then once a bug goes inside that grid it connects the circuit and then that energy from the capacitor gets dumped to the bug and it allegedly explodes. Now one way that I can modify this thing is to remove that little dinky capacitor in there and replace it with some giant capacitors. Now the only issue is it would take forever to charge it up and if you touched it would kill you instantly. But in fact I have a better idea. I'm going to use this ignition coil from a car to generate those high voltages that I need. And not only because it's easy and cheap to use one of these, but also because it's a good display of electromagnetism. So if I look at the Maxwell Faraday equation, it says that a changing magnetic field induces an electric field. And now the Biot-Savart law says that the magnetic field is proportional to the current going through some wire configuration. So essentially that means that in order to generate really high voltages, I need to be able to change the current really, really quickly. And now here's a very crappy model of what the inside of this thing looks like. So you got two coils, an outer one with less turns and a uh, inner one with more turns. So I start by feeding current through this outer wire here, and then all of a sudden I rip apart a switch. So I make it so the current has to stop suddenly in there. And that means the magnetic field that was produced by this coil also collapses suddenly. And the inside coil does not like that at all. And in order to negate that, the uh, ends of those wires there will uh, rise to very, very high voltages. So essentially, the limiting factor on how much voltage I can get out of this is basically on how quickly I can switch on and off the current going through the coil. Now luckily it's the 21st century, and components that can switch things on and off at very high speeds exist for like pennies. So the main components I'm going to use in my circuit to drive this coil will be this uh, IRFP460 MOSFET that essentially acts as a switch and then this uh, very classic 555 timer, which will tell the uh, MOSFET when to turn off and turn on. So yeah, and then of course I've got to add some signal components and protective components, but it's a relatively simple circuit to build, and there are tons of schematics online. Well that escalated quickly, but it turns out that if I would have just used this uh, bare MOSFET 555 combo, this thing would have fried within seconds. There's no way that it could have handled that back EMF that would have come off that coil. So I had to put a bunch of protective components on the circuit, like this varistor, this little snubber circuit, neon bulb, uh, a bunch of diodes in there, some zener, some just regular ultra-fast recovery rectifiers. But yeah, it needed a lot of components on here to keep it from frying. But now it should be a pretty solid driver. I went ahead and threw on a second coil so I could double the output voltage. So I wired the primary coils in parallel, then the secondaries in series. So this should get quite a bit of voltage. So let's fire this thing up. And here we go. That is a nasty arc. I would not want to touch that. Now before I toss this whole circuit inside that bug zapper, I feel like I should screw around with it a little bit. So right now I'm going to throw this uh, old Russian xenon flash lamp in between the electrodes. Here we go. All right, that's pretty cool. Here's a blank PCB. All right, that's enough screwing around. Well, maybe one more. Now it's time to finally start assembling this thing. Now the first modification I need to do is change out these wires. 
So yeah, these wires may be able to handle 3,000 volts just fine, but man, once it hits over 50,000 volts, it'll just break down that insulation. So I'll throw in some spark plug wire. Even with those spark plug wires, this setup isn't quite going to cut it. Most of it's just arcing there between the uh, ends of those wires there, so I definitely have to separate it more. I added some spacers there to accommodate the much higher voltage. And really, I do need a better grid for this thing, but if I were to replace this, then there wouldn't be a single stock part left on this build, so I decided to leave this part as is. And then I went ahead and added a second MOSFET because there was a lot of power going through that first one and it was heating up. So now I have the power distributed a bit there. And then I couldn't forget that indicator light that was on the last one, so I decided to add this one here. Now I can tell when it's on. How's it look, buddy Tin? You still a cat. Now this is something worth bringing to the family picnic. Is it safe? No. Is it effective? I'm not even sure yet, but it is very, very cool. I would not want to accidentally bump into this. I play with a lot of dangerous things like high voltage, chemicals, lasers. There really aren't that many things that freak me out. But I do have a couple phobias, and one of those are bees and wasps. I can't think of a better tool for removing wasp nests. Bumblebees, now I hate them, but I'm not going to kill them because they're important. Now yellow jackets, on the other hand, they could all die and I wouldn't care. They are not native to the area, and these little bastards sting on any opportunity they have. I ended up having to change out that grid for these uh, prongs here because I found out it was really hard to coerce those hornets into the grid without making them really angry. Let's see if it works on those ground hornets. I think so. Is it effective against stink bugs? One way to find out. Now what about this walking stick? Ah, just kidding, this thing's too cute for the zapper. Well that's about it for this video. Until the next time, stay safe and happy, uh, tasing.